All right, welcome back. Welcome back, Trinidad and Tobago. It's the No Morning Show right here on TTT. And at this time, we're going to be talking to one of the legends in the business, a cultural icon, Kenny Phillips, the CEO of WAC Radio, artist, guitarist, producer, you name it, he's done it. But we particularly love him for the play more local. <laughs> Play more local. Imagine I just come and I know what Kenny has been up to. Good morning to you, Kenny. Morning, how you doing? Fantastic. How you do? Walk one, walk one. Hey, I did, you know. I did, I did. <laughs> you know, Kenny, you've definitely come a long way in the business, but let's just even talk about that little, very extremely important move by you to get radio stations to play at least 50% local content. Are you still trying to get that done or, you know, you just leave it to the people to say, no, government shouldn't be determining what radio stations play? Um, so, you yeah, can remember, I remember marching the road. I think we had three marches. I led the first one because I was the acting president of RIAT, the Recording Industry Association of Trinidad and Tobago. And I remember, I remember delivering one letter to... Ramesh Lawrence Maraj, the then Attorney General. We marched, we marched down Frederick Street, from Woodford Square, down Frederick Street, come back up, went to legal affairs. Then we marched down to 96.1. We bad, we marched, we placed people and we singing and thing and everybody, 50% and everybody, yes, we have to get 50%. And then I remember having to deliver the letter to 96.1, of course, the security guard, because nobody ain't coming out to see we, you understand? Mm -hmm. and, and when, when we got down, in, I think that is what, Tragic Road or something going on there? Right. Um, when we got down there, and I had to walk and deliver the letter, and I feel I had this big mob behind me, and I'm bad, because we, we, we're on a move, we're on a movement. And when I hand the letter, to the security guard at 96.1 and I look back hmm. behind me I realize everybody stay up the road <laughs> and I alone hand the letter you understand to the number one radio station in the country at that time and I am a record producer I having <clears throat> won a road march and had come second about four times and you know so I feel I'm a producer of note in the country so I feel, like, hey, no, no, they can't do me nothing. Only to realize, being that bad John that I was, that they just say, you see that fella? He music not going to play nowhere here anymore. Whatever he said, not playing. So you got locked out after that move by you? Definitely got locked out, got blacklisted, got... And, and what I could say, fast forward, I'm still here. <laughs> you understand? That's all I can say. I'm yeah. Still, but how, talk, us, talk to us about getting back into the business like that, where, you know, that point where you can pinpoint where your music was accepted again by the people of Trinidad and Tobago, or, you know, the radio stations. Talk to us about that. Well, after getting locked out and you realize you're producing and you're not getting no play and thing a few years, you had to do something. Um, I started to work alongside KMC. All KMC tracks that he did used to do right here in the studio. KMC would be here for every day for weeks. All kind of thing. Rough wine. Um, was he one? He had a, a song that went international. I remember working on that vocal for Soul three on years. Fire. Soul on Fire. Having to do having to do drops for Australia, Europe, all kind of thing. And I realized, woo, at least we were working and you know, nobody can nobody can doubt you at that point in time. But yeah. I was still I was still locked out, you understand? I yeah. was still locked out. But how, I, I how does I, that make you feel though, Kenny? When you realize that you are fighting to get that local content for the people on behalf of the people, and you were left stranded and on your own. <laughs> um, yeah, you feel hurt. You feel hurt, but you, you had to just dig deep. And and once you believe in what you're doing, which I do, I believe. I believe in my local content. Um, I think, and so we're saying that was the 1990s kind of thing. And I had an application in for my own radio station, and it took a long time. 
I remember, I have plenty of anecdotes. Eh? I, yes. remember, I, I remember um, a lady from in legal affairs calling me, and I get emotional when I say this. She called me up on the phone and said, um, Mr. Phillips, um, do you still want that radio station? And this is after the application been in for a few years, right? Do you still want that radio station? I said, of course. She said, um, well, all the applications here are in a dump outside ready to be burned. And I just happened to see yours on the top. I said, no, but I, I never said I don't want it. So she said, okay, I'm going to take it out and put it back in. Wow. Took it out and put it back in. You understand what I'm saying here? I understand Goodbye, how you feel. And I'm like, wow. And then one Sunday I'm in church. One Sunday I'm in church. And I get a call. Hey, I see you get the thing, boy. I'm like, what thing? They announced the names of all who get radio license, and you and I will get radio license. I'm like, what? As that lady took that application and put it back in. You understand how, anyhow. But, but you know what? It. Let us not move away from it. What does that tell you about the systems that we have in place here, where somebody can apply for a radio license and somehow it's in the dump to be burnt? Well, um, the systems are working as normal. That's what it tells me. That's how it works. That is how the systems in this country work. If you don't know somebody or somebody knows you, you're in trouble. To just go through the normal channels, you're in mm. trouble. You know. Now that, that to me is very sad indeed. But so many years after now, do you believe that the mindset of the people have changed where they're more accepting of local content? You want me to be brutally honest? Uh, listen, honesty is what I do, darling. Let's go. Uh, no. No. I'll tell you this. Um, majority of my listeners, majority of my listeners on WAC Radio is from the foreign diaspora. The people who have left this country and want to reach back up to home. Right? Yes, I have listeners in Trinidad. Yes, I do. They have the diehards who, who believe in the country. But the businesses, the business, corporate Trinidad and Tobago, does not believe in local content. They don't believe. I was told, I was told that if you want to do a radio station in Trinidad and Tobago, you have to be a wacko. <clears throat> Hence um, wack radio. I, and let me tell you something. I'm not a racial man. Eh? I'm not a racist. I'm not a racial man. But it was a white man who told me that. And if it was any other color, I'd take it. But this white man is telling me nobody wants to hear my culture, my music, 24-7, 365. You want to be a wacko. And I say, oh, wacko, wacko. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm happy that you took it, though, and ran with it. So he'll always remember you for sure. But of course. I, but as they've, I said... They've since, called me, they've since called me to ask me to join the association. And I'm like, yo, I good. I good. Leave yeah. me, I good. I yep. good. But so many years after Kenny, do you believe that, you know, with time we'll get that change, we'll get that appreciation uh, by the population for what belongs to them? You, were, you and Rockers was making the point about when you come to your country or you land in the airport and you want to hear Trinidad and Tobago, right? That, that is only just arguing a point there, you know. Really and truly, this, that is the norm. I remember bringing a big time producer here. He came down to produce, was it was three of them coming from Ireland or somewhere far. Uh, when I say a big time producer, a big artist, right? Um, Damon Alban. Um, he used to be the lead singer of, I think it's the Gorillas and Oasis, something like that, some rock group. But he goes to different countries and produces um, eclectic, odd, music from different Nigeria, Ghana, blah, blah, blah. He ended up here in Trinidad. I was hired to do the recording of Lavantil Rhythm Section. I picked these people up in the airport in my car, right? Three white guys come to produce Trinidad and Tobago music. And while they're driving down, they tell me, hey, well, let me hear in the, in the Irish accent. Can you let us hear some local music? Let's see what's going on in Trinidad. This before I had the radio station. And I am there now training station. Uh, uh, no, uh, um, oh no, uh, no. Yeah, I mean, boy, it's Wednesday. Wednesday don't really be a good day for local music <laughs> in Trinidad. You know? 
And I had to make excuse no. for my country. Yeah, that's I, a... I made excuse, brother. And I, that, that stick in my mind. And they come here to spend money on local music. That was so bad. Anyway, Kenny, you know. Kenny, I want to interject here for a second, right? We're talking about local music and we're talking about, you know, our stuff. Um, but we recently see the emergence of the Trinidad movement. Is that, do you consider that to be local and our stuff as well? Just as much as, as the, the Kaiso and the Calypso and all that stuff? Yeah, I think so. Once it's done by Tribago, then it's, it's our stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's influenced, by, it's influenced by reggae and rap, um, you know, and it wants to be bad. You know, to me, we have a, a thriving reggae movement too. Trinidad reggae, you know, we have it. It's just it don't get... It don't get nowhere. It don't get no do you place. do you think any that, that the part of that reason is is due to how it's presented at all? Because people have a, a way that they feel about when they see, let's say, um, I, I don't want to call them government, but certain types of, of shows that promote our culture, and then they look and they compare it to what they see on television. Um, in terms of you know we we competing with the international market. So yeah. do you yeah. do you think that plays a part in it at all? Yeah, but how how can you compete with a, a, a production that have X amount of budget and you have you have zero, you have zero budget, but you have to make it happen. Yeah. So, so how are we compare ourselves? We always compare. Oh, this is how we the song, and that's how them the song, and we don't song like them, and we need to song more international and blah 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 blah. But we don't have that budget, and I find for the so no budget that we have, we're doing well. You believe that's part of the the, the missing remedy because. When I look as a Jamaican and I see reggae music out there and I come to Trinidad and I see, I tell people all the time, in my mind, anecdotally, Trinidad and Tobago has probably the most, of, the most amount of music per capita. But somehow that's not translating outside. Jamaican artists put out a one song or two song per year. Trinidad's putting out 10 and 20 songs per year. So yeah, why yeah, with yeah. this wealth of music? It doesn't get the same kind of international attention. What's missing? The ecosystem in Trinidad and Tobago is not conducive for our artist art form to grow. There's no, we are, we are, we are putting um, fertilizer in the soil to grow the thing. Mm. Every, everything happening here in spite of. That should be the name on our, on our coat of arms, you know. <laughs> in spite of. We do things in spite of. Not all discipline, tolerance. Ah, uh, forget that. In spite of. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's some serious thing there. <laughs> ah, Kenny, I love you, though. <laughs> yes, yes. Kenny, I want to thank all you right. so much for joining us this morning. That's yeah, <laughs> all right, Kenny, have a good one and keep up the fight. You don't pay them no mind. We'll get there. In spite of. In God. spite of. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Phillips there talking to us this morning about his journey in the music business. And we here at the Now TT Morning Show want to thank him for his tireless work. And you know, Trinis, we're going to celebrate him the minute he closes his eyes. So, Kenny, if it's not in, in, this, in this life, in the next, I you'll be celebrating. Kenny, all now. All thank now God. All right, we Kenny. All right, we, we gotta take wait a for break else. and we'll be back. <laughs> la, la, la.